Hello and welcome back once again to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Today we have a very special podcast for you, the first of its kind on the internet. We're calling it the Pro Tipster Combined 11 Podcast until we come up with a better name anyway. This weekend's biggest match is the Manchester Derby between Manchester United and Manchester City at Old Toilet. Or should I say Old Trafford? So we've decided to pick the best 11 by combining both squads. We've been banging our collective heads over this all night. You can't be any old geek off the street. you got to be handy with the steel, if you know what I mean. Earn your keep. Joining me is Pro Tipster Dan. Hello, Dan. How's it going? Um, Not too bad. Um, In regulation, I guess. <laughs> Regulators! <laughs> <laughs> Look, uh, bef- also, before we start, uh, the Pro Tipster show is available on our Pro Tipster blog site, iTunes, Stitcher, and all the best Android podcast apps as well. If you have any betting questions at all, don't be shy about getting in touch. You can find me on Twitter, Pro Tipster IRL. You can get in touch with us on Facebook, uh, Pro Tipster UK. And Dan, where can we find you? Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Pro Tipster Dan, or one word, or you can find me on um, Facebook. Facebook.com slash Pro Tips to Dan, all one word. Nice to meet you. Magic, very good. Let's establish the rules then for the combined 11. So, uh, it's very simple. We cannot pick players who are injured or suspended. That's it. So, uh, that means no, no Paul Pogba, obviously. Um, right, Dan, let's start with the goalkeeper then. Is there any case at all to be made for the inclusion of Claudio Bravo, or not Claudio Bravo, I mean um, Ederson? Um, only if David De Gea breaks his arm between now and Saturday, <laughs> basically. I think, I, I think this comes down to, at the moment, to the, um, to the age old question, who would win a fight between David De Gea and God? Which is a trick <laughs> question because David De Gea actually is God. <laughs> <laughs> I was practically throwing stuff at the at the t- at the television screen last weekend because I had picked uh, Arsenal to win in one of our videos, and and I said in the video, and I said it, I said I, I said in the video that I I think Arsenal have enough um to to break down Man United's defence unless David De Gea, De Gea has the game of his life, which he then proceeds to go and have the game of his fucking life. Thanks, David De Gea. <laughs> he was he was amazing against Arsenal. He really was. Yeah, he was uh, the double save from Lacazette and Sanchez was just unreal. Um, best keeper in the world for me at the moment. I just don't like his haircut, but other than that, I'd have him in. Yeah. <laughs> uh, right, uh, central defenders. Then who have you gone for here? We'll go with uh, yeah, we'll go with the, the two central defenders here. Who have you gone with, Daniel? Uh, Chris Smalling and Nicholas Otamendi. Aha! I I I'm with you on Otamendi. Why have you gone for Smalling? Um, well, I looked at Man City and I don't rate Mangala. Um, Stones is out at the moment, isn't he? Yeah. Stones, is Stones playing? No. So, um, that's him out. Um, um, Man U, Smalling's the only one that I actually rate as a centre back. Um, Phil Jones is alright, but, um, his face gives me nightmares. <laughs> so, um, he's out. He's, he's completely out. Whereas Smalling, I think he's, um, he's a good steady player and, you know, England international. I don't know how well he partnered with Arthur Mendy, but yeah, that's my pair. Well, I haven't picked Smalling. Uh, I, I've actually gone for Phil Jones uh, because of his face. Uh, I really like his his photographs when he when they, those photographs of sheer and utter terror that are on his face as he tries to play football. I love that about Phil Jones. Uh, I uh, he was terrible. He was an awful player. I think he's come on a lot. Uh, but uh, to be honest, you're probably you're 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 smarter than me, so I'll, I'll give you Smallin for sure. Otamendi as well. I have picked two. Otamendi came in for awful slagging in his first season. A lot of it deserved, but I think I think he's a lot better than he is now. He's still prone to the odd gaff, but uh, I think he's he's much more comfortable there now. And um, w- would you go with company if he was fit? Um, two years ago, yes. One year ago, maybe. I don't think he's quite the player he once was. Yeah. And the one thing I like about company is talismanic, you know, I think he's a leader, but I don't think he's quite the player he once was, because it basically because he's getting old. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Fair enough. Thanks for listening to the Pro Tipster Football Show. Check out ProTipster.com where you can earn money by sharing your tips and coupons. Sign up now and get our free daily newsletter where our experts share their tips. Go to ProTipster.com for more details. Uh, who have you gone for left back? 
Left back. Um, oh, this was the hard one. Um, I would have gone for Mendy if he was fit, but obviously he's uh, he's not. Uh, self is on the pitch notwithstanding. Uh, <laughs> so Ashley Young. Um, it was it was a real it was a real tricky one because Ashley Young is um, a DVB. I'll let you guess what the uh, B stands for. <laughs> the first two are Dirty Villa, <laughs> and um, the choice was between him or Fabian Delph, who also is a DVB and a snake. Um, <laughs> but, yeah, um, Ashley Young. I think he's actually not. I think he's uh, held down the left back role, left wing back role at uh, Manu quite well. So that's my choice. I've played. I, uh, yeah, I, I, I put Luke Shaw in here knowing that it's not his, his, his position at all. I've just gone for him because, uh, I just, uh, yeah, I just don't like Ashley Young. So ever since the bird pooped in his mouth, I just can't, <laughs> can't look at him the same. <laughs> it's, no, I'm sorry man, I know it's not your fault, you didn't deserve it, but you had bird poo in your mouth and you didn't really even notice, you just kind of carried on regardless. Which, and that, that's the weirdest thing. <laughs> yeah, I'd, I'd, I'd puked, no doubt, I'd have puked. Right then, so uh, we'll go with yours then. Who did you pick again? Sorry, I'm gonna have to write this down. Uh, Ashley Young. Ashley Young. You went with Bird Poo. Okay. Bird Poo in the mouth. Bird Poo, Bird poo Young mouth. <laughs> um, who have you got it right back? Another tough one, but I went Carl Walker. Aha. Uh-huh. Okay. I do like Valencia. Um, I do like him, but I think Walker's a better, better right back. A better, uh, he, he's a better player. Um, Valencia has. He's also talismanic. I, I, you know, he's such an underrated player at times, but he's done so well for Manu over the years, and you know, he's held down that right back role. But he's like Ashley Young, you know, originally a winger, moved backwards, and um, and and real really settled. I, I'm gonna I'm gonna put in Marcus Rojo because I just like how tough he is and how kind of sneaky he is. Kyle Walker, uh, Kyle Walker, I, I I still don't get Kyle Walker. Like I I know he. He's, he went for millions and millions of pounds during during the summer, but I still don't see him as a as a proper for that position. You know, he's more kind of like a winger who's not good enough to be a winger. He's a bit like um, oh, he's a bit like Robbie Robbie Brady at Burnley. He's like he's not really a midfielder, but he but he's certainly not a defender. You know, he's kind of one of these like a like an old wing back. You know, but like there hasn't been proper wing backs in I don't know since pff, Dirty Leeds United. You know, in the seventies or something. So that's why I've, I've gone for. But I think I don't know, man. Uh, it's a tough one. I, I agree. I think Carl Carl Walker would play better in a three five two as, as a wing back because he, you know, he gets forward really well, but he's not quite the defender that like Phil Neville. Oh, uh, sorry, Gary Neville. Mm. Wrong, wrong Neville. Then Gary Neville is or was. Maybe, maybe he is. I don't know. I've not seen Gary Neville play recently. <laughs> Right, and I think we'll go with your your one because uh, Walker gives more of a threat when he's attacking than Rojo. Rojo Rojo's not that hot. He's okay. He's fast and and he's okay with the crosses, but he, he doesn't score very much. I think he's only one goal in all his sixty one appearances for Man United so far. He's only one goal, so that's not, not much good. Look, let's get on into the meat of this conversation, uh, where it's all going to happen is in midfield. Who is your? Because uh, we got four three three. Who is your uh, central? Uh, midfielder. Um, providing his fit, which I understand he will be for the weekend, Nemanja Matic. Okay. Nemanja Matic. Why have you gone with Matic? Um, this was a really tough one because Fernandinho almost got it. Uh, but I think Matic is one of the reasons Manchester United are doing so well this season. Um, obviously Pogba's out, so we can't pick him. But I think without without Matic, Pogba is not quite the same player. He's he's a really really useful holding central midfielder. He, he you know he, he's one of those kind of players that I, I, sometimes I think you don't even notice just how good they are. Mm-hmm. And I don't think Man City quite have a player like that. So Matic is my pick. Uh, yeah, I have I've Matic here as well. Uh, that's who I've gone for in the middle. The exact same thing because <laughs> everyone else I have is so attacking that I need someone else there to, to kind of hold it together. So yeah, I've gone with Matic as well. Um, who's on your left side? Kevin De Bruyne. Um, oh okay, yeah, we play quite central uh, in this 4-3-3 because my, my, my two forwards, my two white, uh, forwards are wide. So De Bruyne will be quite central. Um, I think De Bruyne is one of the best players in the Premier League this year. I, I love him. 
I really love him. I love his passion. I love his skill. I love his vision. He makes goals. He scores goals. Um, he's great. I love him. I really do. <laughs> That's a man love here for Kevin De Bruyne. I've gone for De Bruyne, but I've gone for him on the right side. Who have you got on your left? Uh, sorry, that that was your left. Who, I I have I have De Bruyne on my right. So who's on who's on your right? Sorry, I, I actually I put De Bruyne on the right. So so who who's on your left then? This is the controversial one, Jesse Lingard. Ha, huh, you got for Lingard as a winger. Okay, go on then. No, well, it, okay, so it's not as a winger. He's he's quite he again will be quite central because the two forwards are quite wide. I've gone for Jesse Lingard for two reasons. Um, the first one is the uh, is the actual reason, which is he's been outstanding recently. Um, I think he's really matured in this Mourinho side, um, and I think he's forced out Mkhitaryan. He's scoring goals. He's uh, he, he looks a real threat in midfield, and like this team's mega attacking anyway. So I just like the, the uh, idea of De Bruyne and Lingard behind the three, the front three I've got. The second reason I picked him. I had to have a player with a Birmingham City connection, and Jesse, <laughs> Jesse Lingard scored four goals for Birmingham City on his Birmingham City debut, his first league goals in his career, and I was there. <laughs> Fair enough. Um, my my left, and I, I I I I can only presume that you have this guy in in your further up the field in your attack. I've I've Raheem Sterling on my left. Yeah, I have him further forwards. Ah, uh-huh, okay. So how are we going to sort this out then? <laughs> well, let's see what your front line is first. As you probably know, podcasts still grow by word of mouth. Show your support for the Pro Tipster Football Show by telling your football mad friends all about our podcast. Or by leaving a nice review for us on iTunes. Right, well, my central striker is Aguero. I was going to go with Jesus because Jesus always scores when he starts. Always. I think that stat is still ongoing. Um, but, but, but Aguero, I just, I just love him. I think he's just one of, one of the best strikers that, that the Premier League's probably ever had. He's just amazing. I love him. And he's just, he's this little terrier who never just runs all day and he never gives up. And he's got, He's got a kind of little streak of uh, of nastiness in him as well that not a lot of people pick up on. But, you know, you, you can see him sometimes and he'll, he'll leave a little elbow in or he'll, he'll, he'll give a little, uh, he'll tap someone's boot as they're walking away from him. I, I love the dark arts stuff. He's a typical kind of Argentinian striker like that. You know, I know that's a broad sweeping generalization but it's not xenophobia okay and but but i really i just really like what what he does and what he brings to the team and and okay he he does have off times as well where like he won't play well for 70 80 minutes but he'll still score goal you know and you can always kind of depend on him for stuff like that so that's why i've gone have you gone for aguero or jesus or have you gone for Man- aguero i went for aguero mm-hmm. um Jesus did enter my thinking, but I don't think I, I don't think he's done it enough consistently enough. He's a great player, great young player, but he's not done as enough consistently enough as Aguero does. I mean, like I looked at Lukaku and thought, no, <laughs> <laughs> you know, um, maybe ten games ago, like when he was scoring, like on fire scoring, I'd have gone, yeah, 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 Lukaku, but um, no, um, Aguero, I, I love him. Uh, same reasons as you, you know, he's, he's, he's one of these kind of players who just continually scores goals. And, you know, how can you not love a player that contributed to probably the best moments in Premier League history ever? <laughs> <Of course. laughs> when, when, um, was it, who was it who was commentating? Was it, uh, Martin uh, Tyler? Martin Tyler added yeah. 15 O's to the name Aguero. <laughs> yeah, it was, it was brilliant. It was brilliant. What a moment. Um, yeah, he's, he's, he's just a brilliant player. And, and uh, kind of on the Lukaku thing, I think, uh, like, has, has Lukaku got found out or has he just lost all confidence? And whereas, like, Aguero, no one has ever really found him out because he, he can change the way he plays a lot. You know, he, he can drop, he can drop deep, he can go between the lines, he can play wide as well, or else he can just play in around the six yard box and be a goal hanger and score tap ins. He can do all that stuff. I think Lukaku can't, you know. I don't know, I, I think Lukaku, ha- you know, he's always been a, a, a kind of player who scores in streaks. And, um, he scored last night against Cheska Moscow, so maybe he's gonna hit a streak again. And it was a good goal as well. Mm. So, 
Um, but this is the difference, isn't it? Aguero is, I mean, highest goal scorer ever for Man City. You know, yeah, that that's consistently great, isn't it? That that's just a consistently great player. Mm. Uh, who have you gone then for on on the left side of your attack? Leroy Sane. Ah, interesting. Okay, why Sane? I think Sane. Um, I think Pep has um, made him a complete player this year, and Sane is the reason they can't play Aguero and um, Jesus together. Because they play Sane, they play uh, Mendy's not fit, and Sane has to play this kind of wide sort of role, which means there's not enough room for the other for two central uh, two central strikers, Jesus and Aguero. And Sane, uh, he's he's like grease lightning. He really is. He's so quick, and he, he gives he gives Man City this 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 great outs when the when when on the you know on the counter. Gets forward really quickly. They've got like the old Arsenal starburst thing going on. They get the ball and whoop, up the field. <laughs> I see this is why I put Raheem Sterling on the other side because he contributes on the other side and Raheem Sterling this season has found his shooting boots as well and has now become the complete player. And it's my hope he can bring that into the World Cup for England. Yeah, I've gone for, I've gone for David Silva on, on my left side of the attack because I have, then on my left side I would have Raheem Sterling. I'm going to have to call shenanigans, David Silva's injured. Oh, is he? Yes. Ah, okay, 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 okay. Should have done my research a bit better. I didn't know he was out. Um, only came out yesterday, but he won't play. Fair enough. Well, then we have to go with yours then. So Leroy Sane's on the left side. So my left side is Raheem Sterling and Leroy, uh, and Leroy Sane then. I'll, I'll, I'll go with you on this one. Who, who was your left midfield again? Jesse Lingard. Jesse Lingard, yeah. Now I've gone for Lingard on the right side of my attack. Because I want to, see, I just want to see him further, further up the pitch. So basically we've switched Sterling and Lingard between us. Yeah, that, that's pretty much it. Uh uh-huh. So where, 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 where should they be? Should Sterling be further back or further forward? Further forward. You reckon? Um, you need, you yeah, you need to give you need to give him license to roam, license to get forward, license to score. Um, this season he's he he's kind of like um, this is one of the new one of the things that's happened with um, players of of late. We saw um, Henri was the first uh, that I can remember when he was at Monaco. He was a winger, went to Arsenal, became a forward. Um, Nathan Redmond at Southampton was a winger uh, with Birmingham City. Uh, and he's been gradually pushed forward. He's now a forward at Southampton. And I think Raheem Sterling is, is, is like it. He started out as a, more of a winger, but as he's added goals to his game, he's, uh, he's become like in this, in this kind of four, um, four, three, 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 four, three kind of formation. He, he you know, he, he's a, a wide forward, gets forward, drags defenders, um, all over the place, what, you know, wide, drifts in, shoots, scores. Just brilliant! I love it. Sure. It's why I like it's why I like the four three three formation these days. I like three four three as well. I think Chelsea showed it can be a cracking formation. I'm I, I'm I still love I, just, I still love the three five two just because you know from playing uh, FIFA when you pack pack the midfield like that you can control the games more. No, your defense is muck. You've only three defenders, but you know my, my I, I I'm kind of a blood and thunder kind of uh, kind of kind of player because I, I just like to attack 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 and try and outscore people and defending. Ah, I don't really care about defending when I'm playing. But when I'm watching football, yeah, I, I totally get. Uh, I, 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 and I like kind of the dark arts of Catanaccio and stuff like that. But when I'm actually playing games, no, I, I, I don't really care about defending. So look, do you want to run then back through this? So we we, we agree then on, on on David de Gea then in goal. Our central defenders were so we agree on Otamendi and Phil Jones mm-hmm. and Chris Smalling. Ah, uh, what are we going to do here? How are we going to start this out? <laughs> why why oh. why Smalling over Jones? Because Smalling um, doesn't give me nightmares when I look at him. <laughs> <laughs> that's why I like Phil Jones because he scares the hell out of people. All right, I give you. I'm going to end up giving you all these decisions now because because you're 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 more of a football expert than I am. All right, look, I'll give you some all in then. Um, we gone for left back Ashley Young and Luke Shaw, wasn't it? I can't I can't give you Ashley Young because of the bird poop. I can't. I'm drawing drawing a line here. You know you know what? Even though Luke Shaw won't play. 
I'll give you Luke Shaw because Ashley owns a DVB. <laughs> right then, I get one. Woohoo! And right back uh, was yeah, I got I had Marcus Rojo, and uh, yeah, we found out he doesn't score any goals, so we're going with Kyle Walker at right back. Mm-hmm. Uh, we agreed central midfield. We have Nemanja Matic, and then left midfield, right midfield. Uh, so I'll change mine around, and left midfield will go Jesse Lingard, right midfield Kevin De Bruyne. Central striker we agreed on, uh, Sergio Aguero, left attack, I had David Silva, you had Leroy Sané, you just told me that Silva went out injured yesterday, so we'll go with Leroy Sané, and then right attack is Raheem Sterling. Happy with that, Pro Tips are Dan? That'll do, mate. Magic, right. Uh, have you got any predictions for the match at all? Have you looked up the prices at all yet? I'll, I'll do a quick... A quick uh, I've not looked, but um, I, w- I would not even... Um, I would not even um, think about it until after Man City play Shakhtar tonight because you never know if someone's going to get injured. Um, so, mm, but as it stands, with the players that are fit being fit, um, I would be. Oh, I such a hard one to call. I, I would be tempted by the draw. Uh, let me get the early prices here. So, the, um, <clears throat> uh, Man United to win is, uh, these are average prices, 3.21, draw 3.5, City are, uh, City are favourites too, uh, by, by a good bit, 2.2. Um, I can understand that, but I saw a record, I saw a stat this morning, uh, that Man City are unbeaten in their last 40, 4-0 home games in all competitions. They've never, Ever had a longer run on their home ground before? Yeah, I know. I know they have to play Man City. <laughs> and forty is unreal. Yeah, it's insane. Uh, the price on overs is one point eight four. That that's surely going to come down uh, before the kick off on Sunday. And what's the handicap at? Let me check. The handicap is so Man United plus point two five of goal at one point nine five. Man City minus point two five one point nine one, so very no, I wouldn't. hard to pick a winner there. Yeah, I mean that's the thing. That's that's, that's why I I find this one really tricky. You've got Man U who don't get beaten at home against Man City who don't get beaten. Yeah, <laughs> uh, it's um at the moment I'm kind of like looking at the draw because I think it's just going to be I think. I, but if you ask me which one I wanted to win. I would say Man City. Oh, of course, no one, no one, no one but Man United fans want Man United to win. <laughs> Ever, you know. Um, right, but so look, I think we, we can wrap up then, Dan. Thanks very much for for that. Uh, just remind everyone, please, where you are on the internet. Um, you can find me on Twitter at Pro Tips to Dan, all one word. You can find me on Facebook, uh, Pro Tips to Dan, all one word. Uh, www.facebook.com slash Pro Tips to Dan. Um, you can even find me on Quora. Um, if you search for Daniel Ivory, Pro Tipster, you'll, you'll find my answers on Quora, believe it or not. Top 10 for betting in the world at the moment. Oh, magic. Very good. And you can follow me, uh, Pro Tipster IRL. We'll be back then tomorrow evening with a, um, uh, a look towards the Premier League and European football that we always do on Thursdays. Thanks for listening, everyone. You can subscribe to us on iTunes or on Android podcast apps, or you can listen on the Pro Tipster uh, blog as well. Give us a like, a subscribe, and a thumbs up too. And uh, yeah, check out protipster.com for some amazing football tips, and subscribe to our YouTube channel as well for daily videos, tips, previews, strategy videos, and these podcasts, of course, as well. Right then, she will speak to you on Thursday. Good luck. Thanks for listening, everybody. Don't forget to check out protipster.com, where you can earn money by sharing winning football tips. Check us out on YouTube and Instagram. Our handles there are ProTipster Global or get in touch on Twitter, ProTipster EN or ProTipster IRL. Bye.